Welcome back to my channel. I recently posted a video about the new standard zoom lens for the Leica SL camera system and it's a Leica lens Avario Emerit SL constant aperture f2.8 at all focal lengths and it's from 24 to 70 millimeters and this is a very good lens. I also showed a lot of sample images but I also put this lens a little bit in perspective and I also reviewed on my channel the Sigma lens, which is kind of a sibling almost to that lens because the rumors say in the market that Sigma maybe produces this Leica lens on behalf of Leica. And Sigma has a comparable lens for the L-mount system, 24 to 70 millimeter, also constant aperture of f2.8. And this is also a very good lens and a very good choice if you are a Leica SL shooter. And then we also looked quickly into the classic lens, which was released right when the Leica SL camera hit the market. It's the 24 to 90, where you find several reviews on my channel. And that has an extended focal length. So instead of going from 24 to 70, it goes from 24 to 90. And this video here now will even further extend this from 24 to 105 with a Lumix lens. And that is another standard zoom which you can use on the Leica SL camera system, but in general on any L-mount camera. And it is a fantastic lens. And in this video, I will in particular do sports and action photography with that lens. I have shut this lens in the skater park in Zurich. I will show my footage and now let's kick off the video. Let's start with a few general remarks on that standard zoom lens here. And 24 to 105 millimeter really gives you an extended focal length and some people really appreciate that because it brings you a bit closer to your subject than if you would use a normal standard zoom from 24 to 70 millimeters. And the zoom ring here has a lock. So here it's actually now locked and it's locked in the meaning of the word locked in contrast to the Sigma 24 to 70, where if you rotate the zoom ring, it actually unlocks. Here it stays locked, so nothing can happen accidentally. If you unlock it, you can turn the zoom ring and then you have this extended range from 24 to 105. And the resistance of the zoom ring is just right. It has enough resistance so you don't accidentally turn it, but it's also nice to operate even in video situations. It's very, very smooth. The same applies to the focus ring here. Buttery smooth, no scratches. Let's listen for a moment. If you don't hear anything, that's because there is nothing to hear. So there is no noise here. And the build quality in general of that lens is really, really good. The weight of the lens is 680 grams. And the special feature of the lens is that it is also a macro lens. And typically on standard zooms, you have a magnification ratio of 0.25 times or 0.3 times. But this one here has actually a reproduction ratio of 0.5. And that means combined with a minimum focusing distance of 30 centimeters, you get very close to your subject and you can do nice macro images and close up shots with that lens here. Besides the lock switch for the zoom ring on the side, there are two more elements here. And one is a switch to toggle between autofocus and manual focus here. And the other one is a switch to activate or deactivate the optical image stabilization of that standard zoom lens. And if you use the lens on a Panasonic full frame camera body, you can gain up to six stops because the in-body image stabilization is combined with the OIS of the lens. That doesn't work for the Leica camera body. And I'm going to show you this very quickly. So let's switch the camera on and let's go here to the image stabilization. Sorry, that was on page five. And if you look here, image stabilization is grayed out. And that is because here the OIS is activated on the lens. So have a look here, it's grayed out. Now see what happens if I deactivate the OIS. I go now to off here and now image stabilization is no longer grayed out, but it's on. So here you have to actually decide, do you wanna go for the OIS of the lens or do you wanna go for the in-body image stabilization coming from the Leica sensor here in the camera body? And that is a little bit of a pity because it would have been nice, but maybe it comes with a firmware update of the Leica SL2 in the future. Since Leica, Panasonic and Sigma have the L-mount alliance, they should actually make these lenses completely compatible. And it would be nice to actually add the image stabilization from the camera body to the image stabilization coming from the lens. 
There is not much more to say to that lens. I will go into sample images now, but before we come to my shooting in the skater park in Zurich, let's show a few general images. And this lens is really a generalistic lens. It can be used for landscape. It can be used for people photography. In particular, if you zoom in and go into the tele setting at let's say 85 or 70 or 105 millimeters, it's very nice for portraits. The lens is pinpoint sharp and delivers excellent image quality, but you can also use it for cities and architecture. You can use it for macro and close-ups, as I mentioned before. You can use it even for animals. I have one sample image. So let's quickly run through a few general images and then let's focus on sports and action, which was my area of application in photography to test that lens on the Leica SL2 camera body. Before showing my footage from that shooting in the skater park and how that Panasonic lens actually performed on the Leica SL2, let me quickly explain how to set up the camera for sports and action photography. And the first thing to do is to set the camera to fully manual mode. So I push that control wheel here and go into fully manual mode so I can control myself, the aperture and the shutter speed. On the aperture, I actually recommend to open it to some extent, but also stop it down, which means a medium stop down aperture. And why do I want to do it in that way? Because I want to still separate the foreground from the background and the foreground is a fast moving subject, namely a skater, and the background should still have some blurriness to achieve a little bit of a 3D pop, which I'm going to show in the image in a moment. You can also stop it down a little more to 6.3 or maybe go to 5.0. You could also shoot at the widest open setting of f4.0 if you wanna have more background blurriness, but then it is typically a bit harder for the autofocus. So stopping down by a couple of stops is typically recommended here. On exposure time, you should have a very fast shutter speed. And the reason is that the skater, my subject is moving very, very fast when they do their stunts. And in order to get a sharp image, I basically need to freeze that subject and that can only be achieved by a very fast shutter speed. So you will see in the sample images, one over 2000 seconds is something that typically worked quite well for me. On the ISO side, this is customized on my SL2 via that top button here. I recommend to go to auto and let the ISO freely float. And clearly on that day I had bright shooting conditions, it was daylight and then it doesn't create any challenge at all. If you're inside, that might stretch the ISO a little bit, but it is better to have a frozen subject and a very fast shutter speed and make compromises on the side of ISO. So this is my recommendation, let it freely float and let the camera decide what the best ISO is for that particular image under these particular lighting conditions. Next, we need to go into the menu here, into the status screen. And first of all, on the drive mode, I want to go into continuous high speed because that is the best setting for sports and action. You also have the very high speed, but I do not recommend it because it will make compromises in terms of autofocus. So high speed will do fine. And then on the autofocus side, clearly you need to go to autofocus continuous. And then here on the tracking side, so typically I'm here in field, but then for sports and action, you can actually go into tracking and that typically works fine. Let's have a look here. So you see here how this is getting sticky to my the Witcher model here in the background, but what worked best for me, and that's my recommendation, is actually to go to face body detection. And it turned out that actually face body detection worked better 
than the normal tracking mode in my particular situation for these skaters. And clearly I recommend to experiment a little bit and finding out yourself what the best setting is. But for me in that particular shooting situation, the face body detect worked the best. And then maybe on the metering side, I recommend to go for center weighted in particular if you shoot against backlight. It's good if your subject is the place where you meet a light. You could also go for spot here, but sometimes spot is overblowing the background. So I think center weighted is actually the best setting you can have here. I want now to comment on a few hand selected images to explain the settings and basically confirm what I explained before when I demonstrated how to set up the Leica SL2 for sports and action photography. And I want to start with this image here which was shot at 105 mm so the longest focal length we have in that Panasonic lens an aperture of f5.6 1 divided by 2000 seconds and an ISO of 640. And you see this image shot at f5.6 has a little bit of blurriness and softness in the background, but my foreground, the subject, that skater with his stunt in the air is pinpoint sharp. Clearly the movements of the skater in these stunts, they were super quick and super fast. So the very fast shutter speed of 1 divided by 2000 seconds, and I use this word now again, which I used before when I explained the settings on the SL2, is freezing the skater in the air so that we have no motion blurriness here. And the result as you see it here, zooming deeply into the image is absolutely remarkable because the Leica SL2 does not have the strongest reputation to be the best suited camera for sports and action. But here in that combination with the Panasonic lens, the Leica SL2 really fully delivered and captured these fast moving subjects, namely my skaters, in a very impressive and convincing way. Here's another image where I want to make another point. So this image was shot from a much closer distance at 56 millimeter and the widest open aperture setting of f4, still freezing the subject at one divided by 2000 seconds and an ISO of 200. And you see here that despite the fact that the aperture was at its widest open setting of f4.0, still the subject is super sharp and actually the background blurriness also is here in a way that you get a little bit of a 3D pop in the image. So the image has depth and that's what you achieve if you open the aperture of course and in this case are close to the subject. Here's the last image before we conclude the video. So this is now shot at the widest angle we have on that lens, namely at a focal length of 24 millimeters f5.6. Again, one divided by 2000 seconds. That was kind of my universal recipe for the shooting and an ISO of 250, which was chosen by the camera in the way I explained in uh, the settings of the Leica SL2. And here you now clearly get a very wide field of view and you get a lot of details in those images. And again, everything which is moving is frozen because of that very fast shutter speed of one divided by 2000 seconds. In particular, my skater here again, who was flying in that half pipe. My takeaway from that Saturday afternoon in the skater park, but also from other shooting occasions, when I use the lens on the Leica SL2 is that this lens fully delivers. It has a very nice extended focal length range from 24 to 105 millimeters, which gives you a little more than what you have typically on standard zooms, sports and action, no problem, you can do this easily. You just need to get your settings right and then you get nice images from fast moving subjects. In general, the image quality is superb. It's a very sharp lens. It has a pleasant bokeh 
and all in I can recommend this lens. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up as an appreciation for my work. Stay tuned on my channel, there's always more to come. Thanks for watching and of course, peace out.